Hi, <laughs> I'm Brittany. I'm a blogger and a YouTuber. I run a YouTube channel called Scout and Company and I've been running it for about five years. And while I was doing that, I also studied at AUT and did a degree in film. It's sort of like filmmaking in a smaller scale and you have more control over it. So I thought it was a good thing for me to start because I started it while I was at uni and I thought it was a good backbone so that I could start creating and start bettering my craft in a way that I have total control over. Like I don't have to go through someone to get approval or funding or something like that. I work by myself on my YouTube and my blog, which can get a lot, a little bit lonely sometimes, I guess. But I have friends who do both blogging and YouTube. And if I'm feeling creatively stuck, I'll kind of like go to them and like rant or complain about something and then we'll spark a conversation and get me out of a mess. There are pros, like you've got creative control and it's your thing and you can do whatever you like to it, um, which is, which I like. And, and like being reliant on myself, I have to stick to a schedule and like um, enhance my skills or whatever. Like sometimes on like a Friday night, I'll just spend hours watching After Effects tutorials. It's really like, I know it sounds lame, but oh my God, they're so fun. <laughs> and like bettering my skill is something that you have to do when you're working by yourself. I guess you have to do that with a team, but um, there's no one else that you can learn off of or rely on. So it's solely you doing the whole creative thing. I think if you do want to make, if you do want to work in the film industry, um, YouTube is a really good place to start. Like just creatively, it gives you the opportunity to hone your craft um, and in like a, semi-safe environment like there is always going to be someone who doesn't like your work um, and at the same time their criticism can always be a good thing because you can learn from it. So vlogs are easier to make because you just film them on your camera and then you like weekly vlogs and then you edit them all together into a big thing. Um, for my weekly vlogs I like to leave the ambient noise in so that it's more immersive rather than chucking a layer of music over it to like cover it up I guess. I also do a video series called Asking for a Friend which is a monthly series where I bring on someone from my life to answer questions from the internet and like they're usually anonymous which is why it's called Asking for a Friend. And then my other videos there I do like three topics so there's like advice, DIY or style and those are usually well thought out, scripted and like quite planned so I know what shots I want to get rather than just setting up the camera and being like, I need to say something because I won't say it or create it in a way that I'm happy with. My blog's like a lifestyle blog, which is kind of broad, but it, it, it is a topic and that's the topic that I took to YouTube as well, rather than just talking about like random things that don't fit within a bracket. With my YouTube videos, I want to help people or inspire people and that what I take into account when I'm deciding what video to make. I chose YouTube as a platform rather than Facebook and Vimeo because it was more, to me it was seemed like more of a community and um, a lot, I watched a lot of YouTube beforehand and I saw other creators uploading to there so I thought I would go on there too, which like, it just seems more collaborative and more you can connect with other people and I'm, I'm huge on connection. So I have my blog, which I embed all of my videos into, as well as uploading to YouTube. And then I try to direct people to the blog from YouTube too, so it's like, goes both ways. And then I also have an Instagram and a Twitter. I don't have um, a Facebook page anymore for my blog, because I deleted it, because I don't like Facebook. Online is incredibly saturated nowadays, and that's because a lot of younger kids are like, this can be my career. I'm gonna get a camera and I'm gonna make stuff. And then by the time that they're like, like these kids are 10, by the time they actually go into the workforce 10 years later, they're gonna be amazing at what they do because they started so young. And I wish that I had started doing things that young because then I'd have like a really, I'd be really skilled. Um, I think in order to stand out, you just need to know your voice and you need to know who you are and be sure of who you are and also be sure of the content you create rather than um, just making stuff because it's what everyone does.
I think like I don't um, know the right people and I also don't believe enough in myself. I think that's a lot of it. Like I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Or I wanted to be, say like a camera operator or something. And then I go on set, I'm like, everyone's male. I can't do that. And then, so I have to try find another one. And like a lot of the female roles are all like paperwork type stuff. And like, I don't want to be like, I don't want to do that. I want to be like in the creation of film. We didn't feel, no. We didn't study stuff made by females at all, not throughout the entire course. Um, and I did like radio and um, like other media platforms and we never studied anything specific to females or uh, things that were created by females. I think like in first or second year we studied film, but we studied like aliens. I don't even know who that's made by, but we study like mainstream films, not New Zealand content either. We didn't do New Zealand content. We didn't do female stuff. It was kind of just, yeah, well, like, weird. Like I haven't thought about it, but we we didn't make, we didn't well, learn it. Like there was no support offered. There was nothing like. Um, a lot of the other majors, they had internships offered to them. We didn't have internships for our degree, um, our major. You just graduated and then they were like, go out into the world and do your thing. And everyone from my major are working in like various places. No, like we're not all in film. And even then the jobs that we do have aren't exactly what we wanted to do. They're not like right in the film industry. And I think it's gonna take us a while for us if we do want to get working on like proper film things it's going to take a while for people to get there because they have we weren't given any connections or any opportunities to um, like work in those areas in film creating a lot of people have just gone to the admin side of tv so like and that's like scheduling and stuff like that that's not in the studio or not creative or not out on set but it's also where a lot of females end up, which is really sad. Because I'm a media operator, all the other media ops are guys, um, so I'm one of the boys. Even the guy who I work with was like, well, equality has basically been achieved. I'm like, dude, you earn more than me for doing the same job. Like, I know that, so it's not achieved. I've been called, like, Slaza as a nickname, like, and that's just, like, okay. It's because it's, like, a joke. Like, they, that that's normalised and that's okay, rather than it actually being offensive, I guess. So, I don't know, it's, it's weird how we've basically, as females, accepted the shit that they do because we have to, and because if we stand up to it, they'll be like, oh, she's in a bad mood today. Must be her period. <laughs> I'm like, no, just treat me, treat me like a human. I think it can be tough because you're, you're opening yourself up for criticism and like, especially if you're not, usually as a female, you go onto YouTube and you're like beauty guru or like fashion guru. And like, I like fashion, so I'll talk about that, but beauty's not my thing. Like I just like slap on whatever I've got lying around and put on my face and like done. But so I'd never make a video about that. And at first I found that really weird like I tried to fit into the beauty guru style like by making like Halloween costume tutorials and like that involves makeup and stuff like that and it just really wasn't me and it's really awkward to watch because you can tell that I was trying to fit in the stereotype of what a woman should be on YouTube so I think you just have to be you and you just have to have the guts to be you online and that's more vulnerable than being like someone you're not just to get views. Being fake is easy to do online, I guess. And it's safer. But if you want to connect with people and if you want to be fulfilled, I think being you is like the only way forward.